Thank you very much, Rahul Jain, to be with us with Asian Culture Vulture for your movie Invisible Demon. When did you receive the first call that you would be selected at Cannes Film Festival in the selection Cannes for Climate? I was on a mountain in the Swiss Alps, uh, shoveling horse shit and cow shit. I don't know what shit it was. And uh, yeah, that's when I learned. So where does the movie take place? In New Delhi. In New Delhi only? Only. All art needs a container like a limit like a like a like all food goes on a plate right you cannot put the food outside the plate i mean you can but it's not nice so all art also whatever you want to make or say it needs a container and to make a film about pollution my container could have been the city the state the whole region the whole continent or the whole world i chose to make it solely about the city because that's where I'm from in a way and I felt like I had I owed something to it. You were born in du New Delhi? Yes. And uh, when did you go to the US for your studies in cinema? Um, I was I already went to high school in the US. Okay. So around the age of 15. And uh, what's the difference between your, your memories of your childhood in New Delhi and now and the changes that you you saw and you wanted to to, be, to film and prepare your movie? When I was a young boy going to school every morning, I had to take a 90 minute bus ride one way. And uh, I remember seeing islands of foam as a child on the river, thinking, oh, that's so dirty. Maybe the adults will take care of it. And then at some point, without even trying to, I became an adult. And uh, I saw that the islands of foam only got bigger. And was there a particular s situation or action or memory or exper experience which led you to uh, prepare this movie? Um, I was hiking in the mountains for a month and then I went back to Delhi and I think my immune system must have been like, oh, we don't need to function here in the mountains, goodbye. And then right after an, a one hour long flight, arriving directly in Delhi, my lungs just collapsed. I, I became asthmatic immediately. So physically you had this experience? So physically it was an existential terror and mortality that provoked me to make this film. But one of the other things that really uh, made me feel I need to make this film was one day watching a little bee on a really hot summer day, crawl to a puddle of water. And by the time it reached the water, it was just like a few millimeters away, it died from heat. Mm -hmm. And this just devastated me, watching this bee die. Yeah. So, so I suppose that everybody is aware in New Delhi of the situation. And I still 30 million are living there. Everybody in the whole world is aware. But people in Delhi know about Delhi, not by the news, but by what they experience every day on the streets. It's not a secret. The film is not an expose. Mm -hmm. You cannot expose the sun with mm -hmm. something that everybody sees every day. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just collecting all the experiences and perceptions and putting them together in a work of art, hopefully, where the sum of all the parts combined together is higher than each individual component. And did you make scientific researchers? Did you? I met specialists of all sorts, politicians, doctors, lawyers, activists. I realized if I start to go speak to the specialists, it will never end because everybody claims to know more than the other person. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows their own science and own facts. And I realized if you were seeking science in a film, I am not the filmmaker for you. Uh, you can also seek science on Wikipedia. Uh, I was more interested in feelings. So your your movie is an art movie. So I would not call it an art film. No. <laughs> I would call it a nightmare. If I was forced to categorize the film, it would be a horror film. 
Uh -huh. But I, I, I don't see my work as being a genre filmmaker. Uh, so wh what would you like to raise as feel of, which feelings would you like to raise in the audience? Terror. So what would be the con consequence of this terror? That's their job to decide what do they do with it. Which are the people who you filmed in, in your uh, movie? I filmed many people, but the ones you will see in the film, one of them is an ice cream seller who spent 40 years on the streets of Delhi working 12 hour days selling ice cream. How long did it take you to uh, prepare the, the movie? To Did you write a script? I cannot write a documentary script. You cannot write the truth before it happens. It was three years from the first conception to the last cut. Okay. And did you find easily the finance and the distribution for your uh, movie when you, you, you prepared it? I think if you know why you want to do something and if that's sorted, then things just fall into place. All the, all the struggle seems uh, o inconsequential. Like, by that I mean the, uh, the trials feel like, of course, it was a part of the process. So mm -hmm. uh, what must have been very difficult back then and anxiety invoking today seems, of course, there was no other way that, that a film like this would be funded by these people who would agree to work with me just on my second film. Uh, but uh, I can only say that I, I feel completely blessed in every which way. What are you expecting after this can exposure? A couple of weeks of anonymity with my mother somewhere on a very calm place. Uh, um, Did your mother watch the movie? They saw it many times. Okay. I wish the film goes to every single demographic classifiable. Uh -huh. I don't know who my audience is. I feel compelled to believe that whatever, <laughs> whatever I'm saying should be seen by everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's naivete, but uh, it's also uh, a very firm belief in what I do. So yeah, yeah, you said out of the camera that you don't feel to be specifically Indian. So uh, for you, this message is completely international. Yeah, of course. I mean, the CO2 levels do not know geopolitical boundaries and neither does the sea levels. So. I don't understand how is this like a nationalist issue. Do you have the feeling that the awareness in, in India is uh, growing too? I think as it will get even hotter than 51 Celsius, things will happen mm -hmm. and uh, they're already happening. Our alienation from nature, from the fundamental elements that compose us. In a place like Delhi, that alienation has become so far and wide that anybody who thinks otherwise, I'm sure would find it difficult to lie to themselves every day. Mm -hmm. Would you have another uh, final statement to say at the end of our interview? It would be easy to think that the invisible demons, the name of the film is, would be the particulate matter in the air, the destroyer lungs. But I would like people to believe and think and think for themselves that that the demons are actually put in place by our species and uh, and I think we, we, we got what we asked for.